Good morning everyone, my name is Denise and I'm going to tell you how I converted my Artisan 1430 to print for DTF. First of all, I want to say that all of the products that I'm showing, I am not receiving any compensation and I don't necessarily um, recommend them. It's just what I purchased. You should go out and find what's best for you. But these are the things that you will need in order to print DTF transfers with an Artisan 1430. So first of all, you got to have the printer. You're going to need the um, refillable cartridges that have the ARC chip, which means that they are automatically reset chips. So every time you put them in, it resets. You're going to need ink, powder for the film, and then the film. This is a bundle I purchased from DTF Superstore, but there are other DTF suppliers who sell bundles. Uh, the chi these I, I got off of eBay, if I didn't say that. And then I found these. You're going to need uh, syringes to fill your cartridges. I got these off of Amazon, a set of six with the really long needles because you'll need those to get down into the bottle when you get to the end. Um, and then you will need software. I chose to get the um, Acro Rip 9. I purchased mine from McLeod. They have very good um, technical support if you have issues getting it on. I also chose to install mine on a old laptop that I can keep off the internet so I don't have to worry about viruses or um, the other issues that people say can happen with the Acro Rip 9. So, when you get your printer, first thing you're, one, you're going to want to do is fill up your cartridges. So here is a cartridge that I have filled with ink. And the cartridges come, and they're not all going to necessarily look like this, but they should all have two holes. Um, there's this one down here is the air hole on mine, and this one is the ink hole. This plug comes out. And if you have it in, then you're probably not going to get any ink through. And this one stays in when you're printing, but this is the one you take out in order to fill your cartridge. And when you're filling the cartridge, you want to try not to put your needle in too far because you can rupture some of the stuff in here. So I try to keep my needle um, no further into the cartridge than where the little tab goes. And it is kind of messy, so protect your area. And I use a different syringe for each color, and then I keep them bagged up in a uh, little snack size um, Ziploc bag with paper towels because they do continue to leak. And you should clean them out uh, probably once a week if you're doing a lot of printing because the um, syringes and the needles will start to get clogged too. Okay, and then down here, there, was, there were two rows of... Um, rollers. I've taken all of those out with the exception of the very last two on the left and the very last two on the right. This will cause some issues when you're printing with A4 or A3 paper. 13 by 19 will slide through nicely, um, but the A3 and A4 you're going to need to leave about an inch and a half to two inches of space at the bottom of your design so that the print head doesn't smear because it will it will not feed through any further. So keep that in mind when you're making up your designs. Then with the software, like I said, I went with McLeod. They do have excellent um, technical support. So if you have trouble getting it installed, a technician will um, get online with you and help you get it installed on your computer. There is AcroRip 10 and I believe, I don't know if EK Print prints on the 1430. I chose the AcroRip 9 for the price because I am a crafter and I didn't know, I, I didn't want to invest $400 on software on if my printers weren't going to print for very long since I was converting them and really didn't know anything about them, so I didn't want to do that big of an investment. Uh, you will need AcroRip 10 if you want to use an XP 15000 in addition to a 1430 or 1400. So once you get your inks filled, 
your rollers taken out and you don't have to take the rollers out the very first time but you will need to take them out you, you're going to have to do it um, now we're going to go in to the software so oh, let me just close this out so I can show you from the beginning so the software that you're wanting is the one that says Acro Rip White version 9.0. It will also put on like a partner Acro Rip or something that's strictly for um, color, maybe DTG, I don't know. But the, the one that says white. So Partner Rip Pro White for flatbread is what you need. <clears throat> so on your layout screen, well, first of all, uh, you want to make sure that you have your unit set the way you want. There's inches, millimeters, and centimeters. I'm an inch person, so I have mine set on inches. Um, and beyond that, I really don't mess with anything. Um, I do all the rest here where you can see, let me point this where you can see it, my paper width. Um, Sorry. And then um, the width of my design is here. So we will pull in Pikachu. Sorry, I'm trying to do this through my phone and I can't see what I'm doing. I've saved this PNG so it's going to come up really big, but I'm just going to print it at three in at uh, three inches so that I don't use up a whole lot of ink put it in the middle and I'm just going to print on an A4 which is 8.25 by 11.7 okay then we go to the printer settings you want to make sure you have your printer selected if you're using a 1430 then you want this top line to say stylus photo 1390 1400 that's the drivers I will find my printer here uh, check paper size I have that off I usually print at 1440 by 720 um, the print image resample I believe if you have that at true it will it will always size the image um, proportionately. I have the color and the white dot size on mix. On this page, your color management, this is where you determine how much ink is going to get laid down on your film. Uh, currently, I have mine set at 80% with uh, white at 100, but I am having some issues with black smearing. So I'm actually going to go down here and I'm going to change my black to 50 and see if that helps my situation and leave all my other inks where they are. And then on the white, you have a choice up here on whether you want to fill the all area, which would be everything back behind here. 100% under any colored pixel, which is normally what I choose. Gradient white under any colored pixel, I will use that if I'm just doing testing and I don't want to use up a bunch of white and I'm not sure what these others do so I haven't messed with those. Um, then down here you can see previews so right now the way I have it this is what my prints gonna look like with the gradient white under the image. My color preview and then it shows the preview of what's going to print. So this down here, I think some softwares call this the throttle, but this is a pixel decrease. Um, the McLeod people had me set it at five pixels, and this is what sh tells the white how far out to, to print. So I had it like at three, and I was getting white outlines that you could see through everything. So they brought it down to, or put it at five, and so now I think that's how many pixels below the color, it will do the white. So going back to printer, 
you always want to make sure that you mirror your image and so the mirror image is there and then sometimes you might need to turn your image so that lets you do it there okay this of course centers it crosswise and up and down and this will put it in the corner so I always try to put it like in the middle of the page and we're going to hit print so now on this page you always want to make sure that you have print color first and white and color plus white selected it'll change these numbers to one it'll throw up this 90 nozzles which you leave as is and then you hit print. And this is a good spot to look, so I'm doing the gradient white. If I um, check this and, and decide maybe I want to do the under full, you can change it there. Make sure that you've got it selected to the correct printer. I sometimes don't do that, and then I wonder where my print is. So here's print. So this is a small image so it's going to go through a lot faster but I will warn you Acro Rip 9 is slow and the 1430 is also slow so you're not going to be banging out tons and tons and tons of uh, prints in a day but you can do a lot of work and it's nice work once you get it all figured out so it is sending And now it will start printing. Oh, guess what I need to do? Throw in a piece of film. Now, I have experienced issues where the film will just feed through a couple of times. If you have um, sticker paper or maybe a label um, sheet that you use, if you peel off a little bit of the back and feed that through, it'll catch some of the dust and particles that get in there and um, cause some issues. Also, little alcohol pads, clean off all the rollers, blow out the stuff that's in there because um, there's a little sensor in there that will keep it from feeding properly. So I've been having issues with this particular printer where the black smears all over the yellow and my yellow is uh, either black or brown, uh, very dirty looking. So I've been um, work. I've been, I cleaned the print head, that didn't fix it. Um, so I am, on this one, have turned the black down because I noticed that I was getting like splatters of black so I'm thinking that it was just turned up too high so you when you're having issues with the color sorry I'm trying to get you a picture of this um, try turning down the colors if, if you're getting an issue with one particular one bleeding into something and it's almost done you also want to have something on your tray to help the print come out neatly, um, especially if it's a, a long sheet, then you'll start getting some issues where it taps up against the case and it messes up your print. All right, so remember we did the gradient white. That's why you don't see a lot of white on here. Let's see what we got. Oh, looky there. That looks pretty darn good. I am very pleased with that today. All right, if you have any other questions, let me know.